Hey folks, Rich here at rcinformer.com. Thanks for checking out this video on the F4U Corsair from Fly Zone. This is their Select Scale TXR uh, version of the airplane. TXR means transmitter ready. Ready. So now we can buy airplanes that have receivers in them, uh, and we can bind them to almost any radio we have. Now it it, it does uh, have a tactic receiver in it that uh, you can bind with a tactic uh, tactic radio, or uh, with the AnyLink system, which I'm going to be showing you in the video. Uh, you can pretty much bind it to almost uh, any radio you have. Now I'm using it with my Futaba 8J and I'm going to show you how to bind it up with that. Uh, but also I'm going to show you how to bind it up uh, with a Spectrum radio. This is a DX7. Uh, just to show you how easy it is to bind from one radio to the other and, uh, and then just go flying with it. It's, uh, it's actually kind of a nice system. Um, uh, it's nice not to have to necessarily add your own receiver but get a plane that's already installed and ready to go for you. Um, now this airplane here, the, 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 the F4U Corsair, uh, this fly zone version. Uh, this is a replica of uh, Pappy Boeington's airplane in World War II. So they actually did model it after a, a real airplane. And uh, I'm real impressed by um, um, how, how easy it was to build, how well it's designed, how well it flies. It's just sort of a nice package. Uh, the whole thing goes together. Uh, we're reaching an all-time low here. Uh, what I mean by that is this thing goes together with three screws. Now I have other airplanes that have nine screws, six screws, whatever. But this whole airplane goes together with only three. They're machine screws that go into a, uh, a metal nut that's inside the airplane. Uh, and it's really that simple uh, to put together. Uh, the main wing comes all in one piece with the retracts installed, servo installed for the ailerons. And the lights, as you can see, has these really nice uh, position, red and green position lights and strobe lights that really stand out uh, on this thing. But uh, as you can see, they're, they're nice and bright. And I'm in the daylight, so it gets to be dusk and they really stand out quite nice and it just looks really good in the air. Uh, but the main wing goes on with a tongue and groove up front and a single screw up the, the underside uh, that goes into taps in the metal and your elevator and rudder. Uh, they go on with a single screw, one from the back and one uh, up from underneath. Uh, you connect up the linkages and this plane is ready to, 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 to bind up uh, to your radio and are ready to go fly. So it's just such a nice package. Uh, the detailing on it is very nice. Uh, they, uh, they, they accurately and very nicely apply the decals and it has panel lines uh, all throughout the thing. So it really represents a, a Corsair uh, uh, quite nicely. Now, um, as I said, it goes together very easily. Uh, the advantage of that is that it also comes apart real easy. Three screws, you just unplug uh, your, your wing servos from the receiver and the whole thing just breaks down really easily. And uh, if you need to transport it, it's awesome for that. Even the tail, you just unscrew the screws and, and, and the whole thing breaks down. Um, the box that it came in uh, has tabs to open it up with. So it's not a bad idea if you need to transport it. You just with a little bit of foam padding, you can transport it in the box uh, that it came with uh, just to kind of keep it uh, safe and protected. Um, a nice feature about this plane that kind of stands out really above all the others is that the instruction manual is just top-notch. It is written in pure English and it's very detailed. They give you very good CG information, even control throw information, uh, but it's really written so well and it's so detailed that uh, somebody who's really more, more or less new to the hobby or somebody who, who, who needs more information, this thing is just packed full of stuff and uh, everything works well. CG control throws, I programmed everything up with this thing with the control throws that were in here. And, uh, and the plane flies fantastic. So thumbs up for the instruction manual. It's definitely probably one of the best ones I think I've seen. Um, uh, probably the nicest thing about this thing overall, once you get it all together, is the way it flies. It just flies so scale, it flies so well. It does loops, rolls, aerobatics, um, flies inverted real solid. Uh, and it's just sort of a pleasure to fly. It's just a very scale airplane. And it's actually quite fast. Now, um, one of the things that makes it uh, that way is how efficient it is, and that comes from both the propeller uh, and the landing gear on this airplane. Now, a lot of guys who've seen this plane have said, ah, too bad it doesn't have a scale propeller, too bad it doesn't have a four-bladed prop, um, which they look good. The problem with four-bladed props and three-bladed props is uh, they're less efficient, 
and you usually have to go up to four cells or more um, to pull that much. Two-bladed props are so much more efficient that this airplane gets away with operating only on three cells. So the performance that you saw of this airplane flying, it's flying on a three cell 2100 milliamp pack, which is very impressive for a uh, roughly a 1200 millimeter Warbird uh, operating on three cells and it flies quite nicely. The other feature that really stands out on this airplane uh, without a doubt is the landing gear system. The landing gear system is the closest thing I've seen to a real airplane. Uh, it rotates up and down with a bevel gear system, not a drag link, so it operates like a real airplane. Plus it has over center mechanisms uh, to keep it locked down uh, with springs, which is just how a real airplane uh, operates. Also, it's probably the cleanest gear system I've seen, which also explains um, the performance of the airplane. When the wheels go up, uh, the doors close, and the underside of this wing is so clean and so efficient uh, that uh, this plane gets every bit out of being clean, having a two-bladed prop, and operating only on three cells. It just flies fantastic. And, and actually having a three-cell airplane, uh, as anybody that knows who's been out there, uh, you can have two or three cell batteries and you can fly all day because three cell batteries will charge very fast at the field. You don't have to worry about huge capacities or anything. So you can charge two, one or two batteries while you're flying and just keep rotating and you can fly all day with this thing on three cells. So it's really uh, pretty nice. Now I put together a video series. There's three videos on this airplane. Uh, there's an out of the box video. Uh, there's a, a full build and tips and any link uh, guide which is what this is that you can see. Uh, and then there's a flying only video. So check out the links at the end of the video you, or check out rcinformer.com or check out rcinformer on Facebook or YouTube and uh, you'll see the three videos that are in the series to this thing. So, uh, and again, this video is going to talk you through really a full build of the airplane because it's pretty simple to assemble. I'm going to show you how to really put the whole thing together uh, and how easy it is. I'm going to show you how uh, some of the features I like of it and show you really in detail uh, the design features that went into this thing. Uh, and I'm also going to show you that any link system like I talked about how to bind it up to radios and how simple that is. Anyway guys, without further delay, uh, let's get on with the video. Hey folks, Rich here at rcinformer.com. Thanks for checking out this video on the FlyZone F4U Corsair. This is their uh, select scale transmitter ready airplane that I already did an unboxing of and now uh, I'm going to show you how to get this thing together. Uh, I thought I'd show you kind of entirety how this thing goes together because it's so simple to put together uh, it's kind of impressive to, to be able to get a model like this out of the box and just throw it together so quickly. As you can see, there's only a few parts, the fuselage, the wing, the two tail sections, and um, the uh, propeller and hub there. Also, you can see the three screws right here. Uh, the whole thing goes together with uh, only three screws. So uh, I'll talk you through the building of this and some suggestions I have for it. And in addition, I'm going to show you how to link this together uh, with uh, a different transmitter. So I'll be showing you a few different transmitter types that you can easily use this AnyLink system uh, and uh, link it to the tactic receiver uh, that's inside. Anyway guys, without further delay, uh, let's get on with the building. The first step to the assembly process is really just attaching the tail. There's uh, no glue needed and all you really need to do is uh, just take uh, the uh, elevator rod that is already installed in the fuselage and just sort of pull it out and what you're going to do is you're going to put it into the last hole here in the uh, elevator horn. As you can see, uh, that goes on really easy. And I'll just give you a little zoom in here so you can kind of get an idea what that looks like. Uh, you can see uh, it just plugs in there really easy. And you want to have uh, the pointed end here, this end right here, uh, towards the inside of the airplane so uh, there's no binding. Now once that's done, you can see right in here, there's a little tiny, there's a tiny uh, plastic piece with a, uh, with a metal uh, uh, threaded nut uh, that's in there for the screw that's going to go in. And all you need to do is just take this whole unit and just very carefully just push this all down in here and uh, just attach the tail. And you can look at the whole thing and just check it for fit, but you can see how easy and how quickly uh, that this thing goes together. Now uh, you can see I already put the screw in here and all you need to do is just stick a screwdriver right in there, tighten it up, and the tail is already assembled. It's important to note when securing this tail screw, it's not a bad idea to put a little bit of blue Loctite on there because it is a metal screw going into metal threads and that helps keep it a little bit more secure. So once your tail is secured into place, and as you can see, no glue is needed for that, uh, you go down to this end and uh, make sure that this uh, push rod uh, is inserted uh, inside the easy connector as you can see right here. 
Um, once you have your uh, horn 90 degrees roughly to your uh, push rod, then you can go back here to the tail again and uh, make sure your uh, elevator is neutral. And right now that push rod uh, is moving in and out of that uh, uh, easy connector. But once you have it in a neutral position, you can come back here and uh, tighten up this screw. Now we're going to do the same thing for the rudder later and with both of these screws again it's not a bad idea uh, to use a little bit of blue Loctite on there uh, to keep it uh, nice and secure. The next step in assembly is installing the vertical stabilizer and rudder and if you saw the uh, unboxing of this airplane uh, you'll know that I had a, a little bit of a, um, a, a torn foam hinge for this rudder but uh, again, guys, it's not a big deal. This happens with uh, pretty much every manufacturer of foam planes. Sometimes they just are a little thin and they tear and it's uh, no big deal. But using a little bit of welder glue right on that hinge right there will get this thing glued back together. I went ahead and uh, glued this on last night and just kind of let it sit around for a couple hours. And uh, it's uh, even stronger uh, than it comes out of the box. Uh, I did do a separate video, guys. It's called uh, uh, Repairing Foam Hinges or foam hinge repair, I don't remember the exact name of it, but it'll really talk you through how you can do this and how this applies to really any foam hinge on uh, any flight control surface. When installing the rudder, uh, you'll notice here that there's a little, uh, there's a quite a big plastic mount here and the paint doesn't stick to it too well, but it's on the underside so you really don't see this. In fact, scraping it away here, I can kind of show you really what it looks like. And uh, there's a torque rod on the fuselage that's going to go right in that slot and there is a plastic piece with a metal threaded nut here on the inside so this whole thing will go together without any uh, glue at all and as you look at the uh, pocket here uh, simply all you're going to do is just put this rudder down in this is really pretty much about the easiest uh, rudder installation I've had and when you wiggle this around a little bit see that torque rod is just going to go right uh, into that slot and now you actually have rudder control um, and uh, again no glues needed all you need to do is go to the underside here and uh, there is uh, one spot right under here where you go ahead and take a screw and you insert it in there. Uh, again, this is another place that I would use uh, a little bit of blue Loctite because it does go into a metal thread and that will make uh, the whole uh, tail section uh, much more secure. But uh, anyway guys, you can see how uh, easy of an installation that this entire tail uh, is. With your rudder completely installed, you want to check it from uh, behind and uh, just make sure that it's uh, in the neutral position and also check your tail wheel too to make sure it's also neutral and they both look like they line up pretty good um, and once your rudder is neutral you're going to come back here to the servo kind of like we did before and you're going to line up your horn roughly perpendicular um, with the push rod and then again go ahead and tighten down uh, this easy connector right here uh, using a little bit of blue loctite and your servos and your tail are completely done and installed. Prior to installing the wing, you do want to make sure that this screw on this easy connector for the uh, ailerons is uh, nice and secure. And I found mine was, and I uh, backed it out just to make sure. Uh, so when I put it back in, I used a little bit of blue Loctite, which is not a bad idea. Uh, make sure that your uh, horn is uh, neutral, just the way you see it, and your ailerons are neutral. Tighten the screw up some, with some Loctite, and it'll be nice and secure. The last step in getting this Corsair together is attaching the wing and it's very simple but you do want to make sure that when you feed these three wires uh, through the underside of the fuselage and here into the uh, receiver area that you are pulling on them just a little bit to make sure that the wires don't get caught around the easy connectors for the rudder and elevator. And I'll open this up and you can kind of take a look. You can see how close those wires are to those easy connectors so you just want to make sure again you're pulling on those things so as you can see as I push it on they tend to kind of gravitate towards those easy connectors and you really don't want those getting hung up around there. So uh, you go ahead and insert the uh, front tongue uh, into the groove first. And as you hold this thing with two hands, very carefully just pull on this and you can sort of visually verify uh, and make sure that those wires are not getting hung up. But uh, uh, anyway, once you get this thing inserted, you can see the whole thing just kind of lays together nicely. And you can flip this over and there's really just one screw that holds this whole thing together. A uh, little bit of blue Loctite again here because you are going into metal threads and uh, this whole wing uh, will be secured in position. The final step in the assembly process is uh, installing the prop. This whole prop and, uh, and collet drive uh, uh, package come already assembled. And all you have to do really is just slide it on, uh, just tighten the screw down, you know, get a wrench and just very carefully tighten. You don't have to tighten it too tight because make it too tight you won't be able to get the thing off. And then you just take your spinner. Uh, your hub nut and you go ahead and you just put it on. This is really just for cosmetics 
it's really the larger nut that uh, holds it in place. And uh, this thing's ready to go. Now, what I would recommend doing though is uh, before you finally install the prop, and I'm just really showing you how to do this, it's probably not a bad idea to power up the airplane and get everything rolling first. Make sure your prop is spinning in the correct direction and everything. And then go ahead and put the prop on. This way you can just test it, make sure everything's working, and you don't have to worry about the prop spinning and uh, getting hurt or anything like that. So uh, again, it's not a bad idea to save uh, putting the prop on uh, as, a, as a last step after the electronics are hooked up. Now that the wing is installed, the last step is really just to install the uh, remaining uh, servo hookups. You've got the, uh, the lights coming out of the wing that just plug into any open channel because they just need power. And uh, let's see, number five is going to plug into the uh, landing gear channel, number five. And uh, number one is going to go into the aileron. And then everything else is already hooked up. Throttle, elevator, and rudder are already hooked up. The nice thing is, is this Tactic receiver came already installed uh, with your uh, Velcro and everything. And as you can see here, they put a little bit of uh, double-sided foam tape between the receiver and the Velcro just for a little uh, shock damper. But uh, anyway, all you really need to do is just install this thing back in there and uh, just get it in place so it's nice and straight. Make sure your antenna is sticking out as straight as you can get it to, to stick out there. And uh, everything's installed and uh, we're ready to uh, bind this up and go fly. As we look inside the battery compartment, you can see all the way down on the floor, deep, deep inside there, there's a little piece of Velcro uh, where this uh, battery is going to secure inside for the airplane. And uh, what they intend is for the battery to actually go in sideways like this and all the way in as far as you can get it so you can take advantage of all this weight and uh, it's going to sit on the floor. So you really only need two pieces of Velcro. They provide enough to do uh, about two batteries with and you can just cut it up and uh, you can put it on each end of the battery and this will fit all the way down in there and secure it to the bottom. These, uh, these fly zone batteries, uh, these 2100, 20C, uh, three cell batteries, actually it's kind of nice because they come with these uh, three and a half millimeter bullet connectors that are already compatible with the airplane. So there's no need to solder uh, any of these if you're going to go ahead and use these fly zone batteries. But, you know, if you have your own batteries, you can make an adapter uh, or uh, uh, you can uh, really use uh, any adapter you want and solder what you like. But, uh, but again, these fly zone batteries come with the adapter that uh, fits on the airplane, so you don't need to do any soldering at all. Here's a quick look inside the battery compartment, and uh, you can see the, uh, the fly zone battery installed in there. Uh, there's Velcro on the right side holding it down, Velcro on the left side holding it down, and there's plenty of cooling above and below that battery, so it cools down everything really nicely. Uh, the nice thing about this battery, too, and, and uh, this system is uh, not only are the battery leads compatible, but the airplane balances uh, perfectly with this battery, so no additional uh, balancing is needed. And uh, just like the picture shows here, the guy's balancing uh, the airplane um, with his fingers upside down. I found that this plane does balance perfectly just like that uh, with the stock battery. And not only that, but it balances on this forward panel line. So if you use this forward panel line here, use this forward panel line here, that's 73 millimeters. And if you balance the plane upside down right there, you'll find it does balance nice and straight. And that's a good place where this plane will fly well at. One suggestion I have for the Corsair is to add a little bit of nose weight to it with the uh, factory battery. Uh, it will fly just fine uh, the way it is out of the box. Uh, but at high speeds, uh, if you like to fly fast like I do, uh, it does tend to get a little pitch sensitive at the higher speed. So a little bit of nose weight uh, will help uh, cure that. And uh, I did end up adding about uh, two ounces of weight right up front here. Uh, they do point out in the instruction manual, as you can see right here, uh, they do show you just to remove the, uh, the, the dummy uh, engine detail and uh, just put the, the weight uh, right up front there. Uh, anyway guys, uh, this will make your plane fly much more stable at high speeds. Now that the receiver is installed inside the Corsair, it's time to bind up the, uh, the Tactic receiver to my uh, Futaba 8J radio. I'm going to go ahead and use this AnyLink and show you how easy this thing is to use. Uh, it's real nice because this AnyLink uh, uh, adapter will really uh, adapt uh, any radio uh, to work off the Tactic receiver. Uh, the instruction manual inside here uh, gives you a breakdown of what radios it works with, shows you how to mount it to the back of your radio, and, uh, and it shows you different cables and things that you do need to use for uh, different transmitters. But uh, uh, what you get inside here is the uh, AnyLink adapter, uh, which really mostly just plugs into the trainer port of the, uh, in the back of your radio. Uh, they give you this really heavy duty, um, um, sort of like uh, um, Velcro type stuff, but it's a really tough plastic uh, because they want to make sure that this thing 
is stuck with some uh, good 3M uh, adhesive onto the back of your radio so it doesn't come off. And they give you a supply of cables uh, depending on which radio that you're using. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use this cable right here, which is actually going to go into the uh, trainer port. So uh, it's a real simple hookup. All you really need to do is just remove uh, this little uh, this little warning label, uh, which uh, is uh, I already took off, but uh, that's how it comes installed on here because they want you to read the instructions before you put this whole thing together. But uh, really, all you have to do is just uh, attach um, this lead into here. You're going to take your radio and you're going to flip it around. And this thing is going to go into the uh, trainer port. So once you plug that in, you're going to go ahead and take that Velcro material and you're going to Velcro it to uh, really any desired position, uh, really anywhere you want to put it, uh, where it's uh, out of your way and uh, where the antenna is uh, pretty much free of something. So uh, there's really a lot of options on how you want to do that. So uh, you're free to, to, to attach that where you want to. Here's a look at the Futaba 8J with the AnyLink system uh, mounted onto the back. I'll go ahead and power it up, and as we flip it over to see the back side, you can see uh, I used the uh, hard locking mount strip to hold this on, so this is a detachable, pretty much just like Velcro. And uh, you can see that uh, it's plugged into the uh, trainer port as we put it in, it's plugged into the side of the, uh, side of the unit, and you have this uh, status light that uh, tells you the thing's on, thing is on. In order to bind your receiver, it's really this simple, all you have to do is just make sure your radio is on, and uh, the radio is within 20 inches of the receiver. And uh, you don't even need to remove the receiver to get this thing uh, to bind. All you do is uh, plug in your power. And uh, the difference here is that I have actually have previously uh, gone through the binding process. So you can see the receiver light is on. But what you're going to see uh, when you start this up initially is uh, there's going to be no light there. It's just going to be dark. And uh, it's, uh, it's this simple. You just want to grab a paper clip. In this case, I'm actually using a needle file. And all you're going to do is, is just reach down into here to the bind button that's recessed in there. And you're going to press it and hold it. And what's going to happen is, is uh, it's going to go dark. It's going to flash a little bit. And then it's going to go completely dark again. So as you press it, it goes dark. You'll see it flash a little bit as it goes through the binding process. And uh, then it goes completely dark. Uh, then you go ahead and release the bind button and it should come on steady and that indicates that the uh, binding was successful. Now if you want to recheck that and uh, make sure everything uh, works okay uh, just first go ahead and just unplug your receiver battery turn your radio off go ahead and turn your radio back on again let it boot up through its uh, boot up process there now go ahead and hook up your receiver battery again and you can see the receiver light is on and let's test out the servos and see if everything works. Looks like I have good aileron control, elevator, and rudder. And then you can go ahead and set up, uh, if you need to reverse any channels or anything, uh, check out your landing gear and then uh, trim and tune the model. But really guys, binding a receiver uh, to this uh, AnyLink system through really any radio, uh, as you can see, it's really uh, quite easy to do. Now because the AnyLink system works with a multitude of radios, I thought I'd show you how uh, to set this up and bind it and everything with, uh, with another brand of radio. In this case, I'm using a uh, Spectrum uh, DX7. Uh, Spectrum and JR are very similar. Uh, you can see I already attached the AnyLink to the back of the radio. This seems to be the best place to put it. It's out of the way of everything and the antenna is free. Uh, I'm using the other cable that uh, came with the, uh, with the uh, AnyLink set. Uh, there are different cables, so if you have a unique radio, you may need to get a, a special cable for it, and there's several available on that list that we looked at earlier. The first thing we're going to do is uh, plug in this one to the DSC port, or the, uh, the trainer port. And uh, as we flip this over, we notice that that actually turns the radio on for you. The switch will remain in the off position. And this is actually how you're going to fly the, the airplane uh, with the radio in this, uh, this condition. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, supply power to the AnyLink Any through this other cable, and we're going to plug this right into the uh, charge port. And as we plug it in, we get a beep. And uh, now we have a little status light telling us that the uh, AnyLink is, uh, is ready to go. Now what we need to do is change the mapping because the aileron, elevator, rudder, and throttle channels on Spectrum and JR radios are just mapped differently. They're in a different position than on uh, uh, several other radios. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is take this stick, and all the, inst the instructions outline all this, but uh, simply you're just going to take this stick, push it to the lower left corner, and you're going to unplug the power cord and then you're going to go ahead and plug it in and you're going to wait a few seconds to get a tone. 
Now that you have a tone, you can release the stick, and now you get a double beep, and that indicates that uh, channels uh, one through four are remapped, and this is now ready uh, to link up to your receiver. Now we're just going to bind the receiver just like we did before. All we're going to do is uh, plug in our power uh, wire to our receiver. And uh, just as we did before, uh, you're not going to have a light here. I, I had already done the binding process on this, so uh, it's showing that it, it, that it has been bound already. Uh, but to run you through it again, all you need to do is uh, just take a needle file or take a paper clip or just something small that you have and insert it into that recessed bind switch. Your radios want to be, you want to have your radio within uh, 20 inches of the receiver. And we're going to go ahead and press on this. We're going to get one flash and we're going to get a second flash. And now you can release it and we now have a steady light and the binding process is complete. Uh, you can just check out your servos, make sure everything's working the way it's supposed to. If you need to reverse anything, now you can go ahead and set up your radio and get this thing ready to fly on a Spectrum radio. One important thing to note about the AnyLink system is that if you use alternate mapping for a Spectrum radio like we uh, just previously did, and you want to go back to using normal channel mapping, such as the Futaba radio that I'm going to use with the model, you have to remap it back to the uh, original mapping. And the simple way to do that is just sort of like we did before. Uh, if the power's on, throttle stick all the way to the left lower hand corner, and you take the three pin connector out of the uh, AnyLink system, and you go ahead and just reinsert it, put it back in, you're gonna wait three seconds. You'll hear that tone, you'll release the stick, you'll hear another tone. Now it's uh, remapped uh, and it's ready to use for Futaba again. All right guys, here's my completed F4U Corsair from FlyZone. As you can tell from the video, uh, this thing really builds fast. In fact, uh, it uh, only needs the three screws that you saw. So you put those three screws in, you adjust uh, a couple of linkages, uh, bind your receiver, and this thing is ready to fly. On top of that, it just has uh, just stellar detail to it. The uh, landing gear is uh, really just phenomenal right out of the box. And uh, the wingtip lights really, uh, really set this thing off and just give it a, a heck of a nice detail to it. Anyway, guys, uh, let me go ahead and uh, show you a closer look at uh, some of the standout features that this model has. First and foremost, one thing I really like about this plane is the, uh, the battery compartment hatch. Uh, a lot of battery compartment hatches have magnets and they tend to um, sometimes come off. But uh, this one has a very low profile uh, snapping uh, type uh, latch mechanism. You can see there it has like a little uh, tab on the end of it here that uh, locks into a little piece of plastic in there. But uh, I've just found that it's nice to kind of get away from magnets and have a secure locking mechanism, but also one that's very streamlined so you don't have any uh, big bulky items sticking out. One thing I like about this airplane is that it was modeled after a real airplane. This is Pappy Boeington's uh, Corsair Lucibel that he flew back in World War II, and it has the markings uh, right down to all the Japanese uh, kill markings on the side of the airplane which I think is pretty neat, skull and crossbones up front. But one standout feature that's really awesome on this airplane is the fact that the, the motor and speed controller are cooled the way the real airplane was. And you can see I put some lights back or in the front of the cowling and you can see the light shining through the back. This, uh, th these cow flaps actually draw air out all the way around the entire outside of the, the motor and speed controller compartment and actually cool the, the motor and speed controller the way the real airplane did. So definitely an A plus on the cooling on this thing. A lot of airplanes are lacking uh, the cooling that they need, uh, but this one uh, uh, has it in spades. Now without a doubt, a real standout feature on this airplane is the uh, navigation lights. Now a lot of planes nowadays, nowadays they are putting uh, working lights on the airplane, but this really went a step further. Not only does it have a super bright uh, uh, navigation light on each wingtip, uh, it also has a separate strobe light that is uh, really pretty darn bright and I'm kind of anxious to get this plane out to the field and uh, you know get it in, into, into the dusk and uh, see how it looks uh, in a reduced lighting condition and it's probably going to look pretty fantastic. Probably one of the most standout features on this airplane is the uh, landing gear. Now the tail wheel itself is not a retractable unit but they did a really good job making it scale. In fact it's uh, it's probably almost a little bit over engineered if anything but uh, they really they really designed it kind of to take some abuse. As you can see here, it has a really nice, uh, almost complex spring mechanism here that uh, lets this thing take some uh, some serious shock. Uh, they also, for for grass use, 
they put two springs, one here and one on the other side, that uh, kind of help uh, absorb some of the load, some of the shock load uh, of this thing hitting grass and bouncing around side to side. Uh, it is steerable, as you can see here, it steers real nice in, in concert with the rudder. And, uh, and it returns to center nicely. Lots of parts in there. As you can see, it's, uh, it's, it's almost uh, like a real aircraft, the way this thing is uh, designed. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, really thumbs up for this tailwheel design. Without a doubt, one of the coolest features of this airplane is the landing gear. It really stands out and it really operates well. I'm just real impressed by uh, how it was designed and uh, how well it functions. Let me go ahead and uh, retract the landing gear so you can get an idea how it, how it works. All right, now one thing's for sure, it's not the most uh, uh, scale operating gear. It doesn't have that scale slow speed, but it goes up and it goes down with authority, and uh, that's really what you want is a good set of working landing gear. Uh, what I'm real impressed with is how clean the bottom of this airplane is. I don't think I've seen too many 1200 millimeter warbirds that actually cleaned up uh, as nicely as this does, and this really makes the plane efficient, makes it faster, and you get more flying time out of the airplane because, uh, again, it's just so much more efficient uh, having a nice clean underside of the airplane. So, thumbs up for whoever designed this this system. It's it's really quite nice. Let me go ahead and extend the gear. Again, it comes out with authority. Now the gear is going to be going into the relative wind, so you want it coming out pretty quick so it, it doesn't get uh, get doesn't get held up. So it's probably not a bad idea with this plane. Uh, especially to slow it down a bit before you throw the gear out and that'll help get it out and get it down and lock. Uh, now let me show you a closer look at uh, what this uh, gear system looks like. Um, it, again, it's real impressive and the nice thing is, is you can replace these. They're, they're not really that expensive uh, to get replacement gear, but you got these little springs and these little parts uh, that they put in there to, to make everything operate. And again, it's, it's complex. It's almost like a kind of like a real airplane landing gear system is. It has springs and bell cranks and uh, all sorts of uh, 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 different parts that really make this thing uh, uh, function well. Uh, as you can see here, it actually has, if you look close enough, you can see it, it's actually, the gear actually does telescope. So it has suspension to it and everything. So not only does it look uh, like a really nice uh, 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 scale landing gear, uh, but it actually functions uh, pretty much the way a real airplane does. Here's a close-up of the uh, landing gear strut, and as you can see right here, uh, it has uh, good compression to it. Uh, one thing they did that uh, is really nice is the pin that runs up and down this channel uh, is not threaded. It's a, uh, a non-threaded pin that they turned in with like sort of a standard screw slot. And the beauty about that, the fact that it's not threaded, is there's very little side-to-side -side rotational play in this thing. Uh, they just did a stellar job, I think, in designing this thing. But, you know, scissor arm functions and everything. Uh, the, no, the front uh, door is spring-loaded and uh, follow this, follows this gear down into the well. Uh, it actually has a real functional uh, sort of over-center mechanism with a spring to hold this thing in place and keep it locked in. Uh, another nice de detail on this, or another feature, is they actually used bevel gears down in here. Uh, and you can see those two bevel gears, and that's what actually allows the gear to uh, rotate. So instead of using a drag link uh, or a drag pin, they actually used some 45-degree uh, 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 bevel gears to actually rotate this thing around. So uh, again, guys, very unique design, very detailed uh, landing gear, and uh, uh, not only is it uh, scale and appearance, but it just functions fantastic. For those of you that like your gear to operate at a scale speed, never fear. There's many ways to accomplish that. If you have a radio with a slow down feature in it, you can go ahead and program channel 5 for the landing gear to slow them down, extending and retracting. Or you can add a slow down mechanism between the uh, channel 5 uh, servo lead and the receiver. And this is the result. Alright, you can see that's a nice scale speed. Let's go ahead and extend it. All right, very cool. Anyway, guys, you can slow your landing gear down again via the radio or a separate slow down mechanism that you can buy and uh, install in the airplane. All right, guys, that concludes this video on the uh, F4U Corsair from FlyZone. You can check it out at uh, flyzoneplanes.com. Uh, uh, between the uh, filming, I actually went there myself and realized that they actually do have a ready to fly version as well. So if you want an all inclusive package that comes uh, with a radio as well, so it's all ready to go fly. Um, that's not a bad option. This is the TXR, which comes with a receiver, uh, so you can link it to your radio, uh, a tactic radio, or any of your ra any radio you want, a Futaba or a Spectrum. 
uh, through the uh, AnyLink uh, system. Now, as you can see from the video, for the most part, guys, this is a real, uh, real winner overall. Um, between uh, the lights, the retractable landing gear, and it flies so well on three cells. Uh, it's just a, quite a phenomenal package, and I'm really, really impressed by it. Uh, now, there are, this is a three-part video, three part video series, so uh, there is a whole separate just flying video that you may want to watch, see how it flies, uh, that I'll put links at the end for. There's also an unboxing as well that I put a link for at the end as well uh, that shows you all the parts in detail and really gets up close uh, to give you an idea of uh, what's in the box. So you can check those out at the links at the end. Uh, also, rcinformer.com, rcinformer on uh, Facebook, and rcinformer on YouTube uh, to find this video. And, uh, and other very detailed uh, building guides and, uh, and, and flight videos. Anyway, guys, once again, thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you next time.